Hello, thanks for joining the rebroadcast. Today I'm periscoping, how do I know if I have a food sensitivity? I thought this was a good topic. Hey Kelsey, oh, both Kelsey's on, love it. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions of people about food sensitivities and just, you know, how do I know if I have one? Um, I think I have this problem, so I thought it'd be a good topic to kind of ease into these health scopes and try to help you guys out. So um, we're gonna be talking food sensitivities and I'm really gonna be giving you a protocol of how to figure out if you have a food sensitivity. So it's gonna be kind of action packed today. I know there's a lot of people that are telling me they can't jump on, so thank you for joining the rebroadcast. If you're new to Periscope, you can just tap the screen to give hearts. Um, and that's just kind of letting me know that you like what I'm talking about and you can hear me and everything's good. So um, thank you everybody for joining. I'm going to go ahead and flip on now and try to get this all set up. That's why I'm a little late to always trying to get the technical difficulties with Periscope. So hello everyone. Thank you for the hearts and thank you for joining. My name is Kate Markovitz. I am a nutritional therapy consultant. Um, you can find everything uh, about me at kmwellness.com. That's my website. And um, today I wanted to talk about food sensitivities. I'm not a doctor or anything like that. I don't diagnose um, or treat diseases, but I am here to kind of help you with your nutrition and diet and how that can play a role in your health. So if you have any questions at all, or if you kind of want to make a comment, this is Periscope. So um, you can definitely go ahead and just type in the chat and let me know if maybe you've done something like this with the food sensitivities or if you think you have a food sensitivity and maybe even some of the signs and symptoms that you experience that you think would give you a food sensitivity. So I was a teacher before I moved into nutrition, so I probably go into teacher mode. Um, so please feel free to interrupt me if you do have any questions kind of throughout the scope. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is um, what is a food sensitivity, food intolerance, food allergies? All those words are kind of thrown around the internet or interwebs. Um, and you hear it a lot even when you go to restaurants, you know, the big gluten-free and all, all everything like that. So celiac disease. Um, so the first thing is food sensitivities and intolerances are basically when your body just has some type of reaction to food that you're eating. Usually it's caused from something called leaky gut. Um, so for example, I will use myself, I have an intolerance to dairy when I eat cheese or have milk or even have some type of like creamy sauce. Usually a few days later, I will break out and have some type of acne. Um, there's some right here just because over the weekend we were out, I didn't really have control of my food. And so I kind of know that I'm just going to have a little bit of a breakout. That's just my body's reaction whenever I have dairy, um, which is a pretty common one. Some people will experience gas or bloating, maybe even immediately after they eat food. The main difference between an intolerance and then an allergy is that you actually can only have an allergy to a protein. So, um, you know, celiac disease, they're allergic to gluten, which is the protein that's found in wheat and rye and um, foods like that. And, um, you know, so when we talk about food allergies, that can only really happen when you talk about a protein. You can have food sensitivities to things even like apples or tomatoes. So you can have food sensitivities to really any food. And a lot of people find that they actually have sensitivities to foods that they eat a lot. Um, and I can explain that. So a lot of people experience what I kind of said before was leaky gut. Um, and so if you eat the same food over and over again, which I'm sure a lot of us do because it's really easy to get into a routine, if you have leaky gut, you're actually going to have, your body's going to start reacting to that food as a foreign invader, kind of make antibodies against it. And um, a lot of time that's why you'll end up with a food sensitivity to a food that you eat quite often. So how do we really find out if we have a food sensitivity, which is really the main thing about my scope here today. What you want to do is you actually want to do like an elimination diet. Um, and it's a four, it's called the 4R protocol. This is the easiest way, I think at least, to try to figure out if you have um, food sensitivities. You can, of course, always go to a practitioner and order some type of um, food sensitivity panel. I 
think they're usually around like 275 if you work like a holistic prote uh, practitioner and it'll list all the foods and kind of tell you if you have the antibodies. I saw Dana jump on and Dana, not that I'm calling you out, but I know that she's done the panel before and she kind of um, did get back that she was sensitive to a lot of different foods. So this is a way to do it without having to work with a practitioner and you can do it at home. It's called the 4R protocol. So the 4R stand for um, number one, remove move, number two, repair, three, re-inoculate, and then four, reintroduce. So I'm going to go through each of those, but it's just four R's. So the first thing we have to do is first we have to remove the foods. So you want to remove whatever food you think you're having a sensitivity to, or sometimes, and I'm going to uh, reference here JJ Virgin. Um, she does the Virgin diet, and she actually has people remove the most common sensitivities, like uh, the six, seven um, sensitivities that most people have. She has them take them out in her Virgin diet. So dairy, gluten, soy, eggs, sugar, um, I think I'm missing one there, nuts. Those are pretty common sensitivities. So if you remove all of those foods, um, that's going to be step one. Eggs, dairy, peanuts. Yeah, I feel, I feel like there's seven. I think I only said six. Whatever they are, because everybody's going to be a little bit different, but that's always a good place to start. And what you want to do is you actually want to remove... Um, you want to remove the, the foods for at least two weeks, but it's really good if you can go up to like three or four weeks. The reason why is it actually takes your small intestine, your lining, and your gut about two weeks, three weeks to completely reheal itself. So you, if you can keep those foods out of your system for as long as possible, and then number two, which is our letter R for repair, um, that's what we want to work on in between. So first we want to remove the foods, then we want to repair our gut. So how do we repair our gut? Um, so what you want to do is the first thing is you want to eat you want to eat the foods that are going to help your gut. So you're going to want to eat soluble fiber um, from starchy vegetables like sweet potatoes. That's going to really help um, get things moving through your system. So there's not a lot of food sitting in there and causing any toxins to build up. You're going to want to eat some omega three. So all the all the seafood that has omega threes. Um, you're going to have want to have the nuts that have omega threes. You could always supplement with a good quality fish oil as well. Um, I take the green pastures fermented cod liver oil. There is some um, controversy around that that came out a little bit over the summer, but I do really well on it. So um, I do recommend that. Or um, as Dana is saying, unless you're allergic to fish, you know, you don't obviously don't want to take a fish oil or shellfish oil if you're allergic to any of those things. Make sure that you drink lots of water and stay hydrated. You can also have some healing teas. Um, so Peppermint is actually a tea that's really helpful to your gut lining, so that would be a good one to kind of have while you're going through these few weeks with these foods removed. You could also take some supplements, so not everybody likes to supplement, so I just want to kind of throw that in there. Um, yep, bone broth is definitely a great great gut healing uh, food and I talked about or I did the bone broth scope that was my very first scope where I showed how to make bone broth so that is a good one um, l-glutamine is a great amino acid that is really going to help heal the gut lining and um, like I said before kind of supplementing with the omega-3s um, quercetin I think I am saying that probably wrong um, it's q-u-e-r something that's also going to be very helpful for the gut healing see I don't know everything either but um, so the first we're gonna remove everything then we're gonna repair by eating fiber having omega-3s water um, yeah, yeah thanks for spelling that Dana um, and supplementing if you want to so number three is to re-inoculate so what you want to do a lot of people have um, taken antibiotics in the past. And this is something that always comes up when I do an initial interview with somebody. I say, you know, they write on their paper, yeah, I've had, um, I've had antibiotics. And I always ask, have you ever taken a probiotic? And most people have not. Um, but what happens with the antibiotics is kind of wipes everything out in your gut. 
Um, and so although it's knocking out some bad guys, it's also knocking out the good guys. So we want to get some good probiotics back in there. Um, so you want to make sure that you are eating probiotic foods, sauerkraut, kefir, kombucha, um, any of those types of foods. You want to make sure you're having those almost daily because that is pretty much what comprises your poop at the end of the day. So you want to make sure that you are eating those quite often. Um, yes, I, I love kombucha. That's probably my favorite and what I have most often. Also having a good probiotic. You can also take a pill if you want to. Um, I think I might actually have I was cleaning out cupboards today. So here's what I have. It's prescriptacist. Um, I actually did a round of this in the past. <laughs> Cosmic cramming. How about the alcoholic ones, right, Dana? Oops. Um, so prescriptacist is my favorite probiotic, but what you want to do with probiotics is you don't want to take the same probiotic back to back. So if I finish this whole bottle of probiotics, I want to move on to a different brand. I don't want to just start taking this, this, um, probiotic only in Vegas. Yeah, I think you're right. I actually have not seen it since then. Um, oh wait, it was in Orlando. Um, so you want to just try to get different strands of probiotics it's, and same thing with eating foods You know if you really only like kombucha um, You want to try to maybe get different brands or make your own at home um, Try to get in some other probiotics prebiotics and like I said really trying to re-inoculate that gut so remove Repair, re-inoculate. If you can't tell, I'm looking at little notes. I wanted to make sure I didn't space in the middle. Um, and then number four is reintroduce. So after, you know, ideally four weeks of removing and repairing our gut and trying to make sure our small intestine lining is completely healed, you want to reintroduce your foods. So let's say you took out um, eggs and gluten and dairy. Let's say you just started with those three things. You took them out of your diet for a month. You actually don't want to go back then and have an omelet with toast and jelly the, the very first morning after you kind of go through and have eliminated all these things. What you would actually want to do, and this is the probably a little bit... Um, I don't know the best way to do it. I did not know about switching up the probiotic. Thanks for that tip. Oh yeah, definitely. You are very welcome. Um, is it Jojo or Jolene? I think I've seen your name before maybe. Um, so what you want to do for introducing is you want to do one food at a time and you almost want to like, yeah, Jolene, cool. Um, you really want to almost like harass your system. So, you know, if I took out eggs, I would want to eat eggs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that first day and wait almost 72 hours or about three days and really think about what's my mood, how's my energy, um, is my mental clarity good, am I having any digestive issues? So once you really get that food back into your system, you have to pay attention to what is happening and what your body's telling you is happening after you eat that food. Um, so after you wait three, yep, keeping a journal, that is a great tip there, Dana. Um, keeping a journal and really, really paying attention, even if you get like a small headache, um, just really what is different or what is not feeling very good after you reintroduce that food. And um, you want to wait up to three days. So that's how long it can take. Like I was saying, you know, today is Tuesday um, and I really kind of only started to break out this morning and that was probably about Sunday that I had or even Saturday night I had some fro-yo, <laughs> which is my weakness. I'm so sad I can't eat it all the time, but I had some of that at the wedding we were at. So, um, and then that is why I kind of broke out just a little bit later. Um, so you wanna harass your system, pay attention. If you don't have any symptoms, you're probably not sensitive that, to that food. It doesn't mean that you weren't sensitive to that food before. You could have had that leaky gut before and you know some of the undigested proteins were getting into your system and your body was reacting. And then maybe once you healed your leaky gut, you were actually able to um, you know, solve that problem and able to eat those foods again so once you test those food three foods um, once you test that food for three days then you want to do the same thing so you want to want to not that I necessarily really think people should eat gluten in general there's no such thing as a gluten and um, you know a gluten deficiency the way nobody really needs gluten but if you wanted to have the breads and stuff you could add in um, the bread 
So if you're seeing food in your poo, you likely have a leaky gut issue. That is a very good point as we, we are knowing too well, huh? Right. <laughs> Um, so great point. Yeah, so those are your the 4R protocol. If you think you're having a food sensitivity, you want to remove, repair, re-inoculate, and then reintroduce. Um, and definitely, like Dana said, keep a journal to make sure that you are paying attention. Um, it's really easy to kind of get caught up in the day and, and lose focus of what's happening, especially like the mental um, foggy kind of feeling. You know, I think a lot of people think like, oh, that's, that just happens in the afternoon. Afternoon. I'm, I get tired, but um, really your energy should be sustained throughout the day. So if you're getting that mental fogginess or that crash in the afternoon, it's probably blood sugar and it's probably something with um, the food that you're eating that's just not reacting well with your body. So I'm loving all the hearts. It's so appropriate that my hearts are food colored. Um, actually, I think they're chocolate covered. We'll go with that one. <laughs> Um, so do you guys have any questions? Does anybody have any foods that they think they're sensitive to? Um, I know that I, like I said about the dairy, that's a big one for me. Um, gluten is a big one for me too. I, I tend to stay away from those foods just kind of in general. Um, and really with the sugar, after doing that sugar detox, I did, I did have the froyo. I don't, I wouldn't say that anything happened too much. Um, I'm not doing the IgG test. She recommended it, um, but I'm not doing it. Tomatoes. Kimmy, what happens when you eat tomatoes? Because I always, I actually always hear the one about tomatoes, and I'm always curious how people react, because it does seem to be kind of common. Thanks, guys, for the hearts. Thanks for jumping on, too. I know I probably talked really fast, and I feel like I was really loud. I was getting into my teacher voice. <laughs> My sister gets back. Oh, reflux from tomatoes. Yeah, I do. I will say um, that that probably makes sense. I know as a kid, which, yeah, the acidity. I know as a kid, I always made my mom put butter on my spaghetti instead of tomato sauce because of that. Yeah, because of acid reflux. Good. I forgot about that. That's Thanks for bringing that up, Kimmy. Stomach ache and acid reflux. Yeah. So I would completely take them out again. Um you know, I don't, if it's just tomatoes, um, that might be different, but it's like a tomato sauce or something. It could even be kind of just like all that sugar, how it's broken down, especially in the sauces. Um, but I love butter, especially grass-fed butter. So that's always a good alternative too. <laughs> yep, HCL is a good one for that. Does anybody else have any other questions? comments any other ideas that you would want to hear about for a scope so after doing this you are saying that sometimes it can heal your gut enough that you can tolerate those foods yeah so um exactly ashley um after after healing your gut there you definitely can go back and you might not have those symptoms anymore so you know let's use the tomatoes for example um which probably is actually what dana was saying it might be a, a the result of low stomach acid with acid reflux but you know let's say the stomach acid issue was figured out and the and the um leaky gut was repaired then maybe they could add tomatoes kimmy could add tomatoes back in and be okay with it do i have any information or knowledge on ic um what is ic i just don't know that abbreviation yes your immune system might not attack the food anymore yeah so actually, I, I really do think that I can tolerate dairy much better than I used to be able to. Um, another, uh, this is this is just something that I took and I use this with some clients. Oh no, I don't know anything about that, Jolene. I'm sorry. I don't know. Dana's on here and she's an NTC as well, so she might have some more information. Um, I took this and I'm just about to finish with it. It's called IPS. So Ashley, because she's a client, if you want to try this, if, you, if you're if you thinking that you have problems. Um, okay, definitely sharing this scope with a cousin. Yeah, definitely. If you guys want to share, if you don't know how to share with Periscope, you can actually type the little Perry chick right here. I don't know what side it is on that. Um, if you tap that and then it says share and you can share with followers or you can share it on Facebook, however you want to copy the link, whatever, um, just to share it and make sure, make sure people are hearing this because it's very, very common. Um, 
Britt uses the IPL. I think I did recommend this with her. Yeah, so this has L-glutamine in it. It has um, lamb intestine, which um, will kind of help peel the intestine. It's got a few other good things in here. So I just kind of did this um, as well because I was very concerned that I had pretty bad leaky <laughs> gut. Um, and the combination of this with my prescript assist has made a really big difference in my digestion. Um, I also was taking some stuff to help with stomach acid um, as just as just a side note, kind of some protocols that I was doing for myself. Oh, look at all the pretty hearts. I love when they're all different colors. Yeah, Dana, I do. I, I Why did I never recommend that to you before? I don't know, but it really helped. I know um, I'm just going to call out Ciara as well. That was also a protocol we put her on and she, it really helped her too. So, um, yeah, and anybody that even has, like, food sensitivities and they already know it, um, this, you know, trying to heal that gut, like I was saying about the leaky gut, that can really, really help you at least have better digestion and hopefully kind of calm down some of those signs and symptoms um, that you're experiencing on a, on a daily basis because it's really hard to feel like you can't, <laughs> you can't eat that much. I've got MCS for liver, but never, I, oh, I don't, I don't know the MCS, but yeah, I really like the IPS. I've, I've used it a few times. So thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I figure about once or twice a week, I can kind of do a little scope like this. Um, it's biotics too. Okay, cool. I'll have to look into that one. Maybe, maybe that'll be a good, good one to kind of incorporate after I'm done with this. Um, so I, you know, like I said, I'm just trying to help as many people as possible and try to do some kind of like mini trainings um, for, especially for people that don't live in the Pittsburgh area where I usually do um, some of these talks like once a month at Faster Pittsburgh, a gym in our area. So um, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. You're the best. And I'm going to see you and Miss Betty soon, which I'm even more excited about. So, um, all right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you for all the hearts. Um, like I said, you can find me at kmwellness.com. I have a blog. Um, you can also sign up to get my self-care calendar, which I have out for the month of November, completely free, just little some some little self-care tips to kind of give back to yourself and be thankful um, and end the year with with <clears throat> with some um you know just calm and also i have a guide on there for self-love it has a little bit of health tips as well so you can check out my website and sign up for both of those things so thank you all for joining in and i'll chat with you later